Okay, so back at the neck journey, and now we're gonna transform this kind of thing into this kind of thing. These things are really pretty impressive structures. Very stiff. Little curvature really changes everything, huh? All right, so the material is this lovely Italian chestnut, which as you can see has quite a lot of nice curl in it. And of course we have it reinforced with our plus or minus 45 linen. This measures about two tenths of a millimeter or eight thousandths of an inch when it's all done. This is something I already demonstrated, but we could lay up another one and show you. I demonstrated this when we were bending sides a long time ago. So this is Super Soft 2 improved, better bonds, etc., etc. Diethylene glycol monoethyl ether, which we've determined is not going to kill us. And a um, little aluminum foil tray. So while that's soaking up some liquid, let's have a look at the tool. This is the top part of the tool that applies pressure to the, to the bag or to piece of tubing that we're using for a bag. And it may interest some of you to notice that this was cut on the Hammond table saw with the cove cutting technique that we demonstrated. And then here's a piece of I don't know, two inch-ish kind of hose. And this is a interesting kind of industrial hose that they intentionally put these ribs on there. The point of which I'm not exactly sure I understand, but I think it's good for this purpose because it means that maybe some air and moisture can move in here after it's all clamped up. In other words, these little raised stripes are are tough enough and strong enough to resist being crushed flat against the wooden material we're using. And, uh, oh, here's a piece that was already in here. This is, this is a piece of wildly curly mahogany bent the same way. This is a little thinner than what we're bending today, but just a little bit thinner. Great material, huh? All right, and then here's the bottom part of this, which I really should make in aluminum. I've, I've busted it a time or two. It's just burst down the middle, and uh, instead of trying to reinforce it, I just glued it back together and crossed my fingers. We'll see what happens. <laughs> so this is a mahogany chunk that I, I also cut on the Hammond saw, and then cleaned up by hand to try and mimic the shape of the final neck part. You can see the, the part has remembered this tool very, very well. It's almost exactly the same shape as it was when it was clamped wet some time ago. Pretty cool. Pretty great tool. Of course, we're using compressed air to blow this up. I have installed a, a little petcock here so I can bleed off pressure if I feel like I need to for some reason. Sometimes um, it's a little tricky to get the veneer in exactly the way you want it. And so sometimes it's nice to be able to ease up on the pressure and reposition things. This isn't a fancy tool over here. We just have a 
a disc of aluminum that I made on the lathe with a, a little recess in it that the hose clamp clamps into. Same thing on the other end and just, you know, quarter inch pipe thread and, and Bob's your uncle. So, and then finally to close the whole thing up, pair of custom clamps just made out of a square tube, some threaded rod and wing nuts. Now these don't actually apply pressure, but they close the distance between the top and the bottom of the tool so that you get it, you get everything positioned right before you power it up with air. And you can see over here, the air gauge has hit the dirt a couple of times. I made this little disc to try and keep it off the dirt, but it hasn't worked too well, has it? Anyway, I don't really care. This is all about feel. I don't care what it really says, but I do have a, a control here over the pressure. So we can start off with a little bit and, and sneak up on it. On this end, the tube is almost the same shape as the part. And so that's no big deal. That's easy on that end. But on the other end, it's a little more challenging where you've got to spread the tube out a little bit in order to get the clamping pressure all the way across the part. So it took a little finagling making this part uh, fit in here and adjust the space that this needs to operate in so that it works properly. Anyhow, I've made quite a lot of parts in here. It works great. So let's see what we're going to do. I don't really have any idea how long it should sit in there. I probably do it different every time. Again, I don't think this is too bad for you. We looked it up and you know, it's not awful, but, you know, going with the general rule that if you can't eat it, you should keep it off you. We'll try and keep most of it off us, huh? Let's see if that's enough. to get the job done. Maybe you remember when we were playing around with that those pieces of maple cutoffs that you can push on the wood and time makes a difference. Can take a little bit of time for the wood to get the idea that you're trying to bend it.
This is feeling pretty stiff to me. And part of the reason is that I've waited a long time since I glued this up. And even though the epoxy is said to I don't know. There are a bunch of facets here. So I'm just checking to see how it's going. Not too happy with a couple of facets. It seems like there's some wrinkles. And this material has been a little challenging to bend because I think there's these mineral streaks in the wood and any discontinuity can be a challenge but let's put it in there and see what we get see if this will work Okay, I've got that pretty low here. Yeah, okay, that's pretty flexible.
Okay, we can see at this end that um, we need some more pressure, obviously. Change the shape of the bag so that it pooches out and does the job. With some pressure in the bag, not a whole lot. But yeah, I think you can see we've got it down there. That's good. And then this end of the bag, not quite. And I'm concerned with those wrinkles, but we'll have to see how this works. I'm afraid this part, top part is misaligned over here. This end is doing better. That looks pretty great, actually. That's pretty good, but at this end, we're going to need to loosen this a little bit and try and shift things around a little bit. Oh, that looks pretty good. Thank you. 
I guess we could leave the clamp like this, but I'm going to put this one on anyway. Okay, last check here. This part is way oversized. In other words, way bigger than it's going to be when it's part of the guitar. So we're going to look here to make sure that we have about the same amount of material sticking out on both sides. And it looks pretty good, really. This is almost right. Close enough. And this end, almost exactly the same. So we don't have a, sometimes a, you could clamp it up and get it twisted and then that's not what we want. But I think we've got, we've got good position. And now we're gonna crank up the pressure. And hope we don't explode the tool. <laughs> Again, I guess we could do this. A little insurance. All right, there it is. Clamped up and uh, under pressure. Remember to leave the compressor on overnight. <laughs> but uh, that's how it works. We'll see what it looks like when we unclamp it. Here we are today unclamping our, our cross grain bent veneer. We'll see, see what we got. I wasn't so happy with it when we bent it because it seemed like maybe the veneer was cracking a little bit which is which would mean a failed part but we'll find out now what happened oh that's helpful right eh? All right, so this was under pressure for, I think, three days. Probably longer than it needed to be, although I don't really know. We can see that the, uh, the striations in the bag have made little marks in the wood. There's small, mostly dirt, I think. Well, you can kind of feel them. So isn't that interesting that just these little extra ribs on the bag have been able to print a little bit. Huh. And then also we can see here that this cracked a little bit where it's unsupported, but that's okay. We have tons of extra material here. And I guess also, before we remove this, we can see that we did manage to get it pretty close to even height, left and right, although, of course, you can see that it's the, although both of them are sticking up, well, I guess it cracked on both sides, cracked down to about here. Again, not a problem, this doesn't pose a defect. For the part. One thing I will notice that I neglected to trim the part exactly the length of the tool, but I guess it wasn't hanging out enough to cause a problem. Sometimes I've had problems when the, I'd forgotten to do that and the part was too long, but anyhow, 
So we'll see about getting this out of the tool. All right. And now we can see that there are some noticeable bumps where the grain lines are. And this is just part of how this particular species works. Every one is different. Of course, on the inside, you can't really feel those. And it's a little confusing because we've got also the striations caused by this bag that I'm using. But on the outside, we can see that there are kind of ridges created where some of the grain lines are. And as I think I mentioned when we were putting this together and bending it by hand that I was noticing that this was happening and wondering if that would be a possible defect. Now, what we're going to do, just so that we're sure that we understand whether that was a problem or not, we're going to lay up another one out of the same veneer. This time we won't wait so long. I think this was, can't remember exactly, but I think I, I glued the cloth to this piece of veneer maybe three weeks ago, I think. And so um, uh, let's talk about the epoxy for a minute. This is a room temperature epoxy. This is the, the wet system. that I like to use. And this is uh, designed by people that were building boats. So it's designed for wood. And it, like, like all room temperature cure epoxies, has a fairly long curing time, even though you can work with it after just, say, five hours at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It still cures over the next week or so, I think, depending on what your temperature is. And you can accelerate the cure by what we call a post-cure, which is adding heat after that first five hours of curing. But what I'm trying to suggest is that there's a moment that lasts for maybe a week or something like that, where the epoxy goes from being cured and structurally significantly strong to the end of its cure cycle where all of the polymerization has taken place and all the chemical bonds have gone through whatever they're gonna go through. Whether or not you get there by time or you get there by post-curing with extra heat, the end result is somewhat more brittle than it is at the beginning, after it's just been cured for, you know, a few hours or a day, say. So I think what we'll do just for our own amusement is to do this again. And this time we're gonna do the bending right away. We'll do the bending tomorrow. So we'll glue this up today and finish the bending tomorrow and we'll see if we get a better result, okay? And maybe it's something that we can't get around and, and maybe it's something that we can do better at if we respect the way the epoxy cures and try to do it as soon as we can before the epoxy has a chance to get super hard, okay? So here's the setup for this. Again, my, my transparent template so that we can we can line it up with the grain from our part here so that we 
get the, the right grain orientation that's pleasant to us. And then also, of course, we're going to pick a, a side to be shown. So I've picked this side to show. Seems better to me this way. I like it when the curls go to the left. As so if you're sitting behind the guitar, I like it better if the curls are going to the left than to the right. And partly it's because the uh, end of the neck tilts a little bit there on the bass side. So kind of more consonant with that angle. Maybe I'll grab one, show you. Well, here's the neck that doesn't have a whole lot of, it doesn't have hardly any angle. These curls are going pretty much straight across the neck. But this is the angled surface I was referring to. So, so to me, it's better if the curl agrees with this tilted surface here rather than competes with it. Anyhow, we have now this laid out. I'm going to, I'm going to saw this, saw off a little bit of extra here and leave, leave enough so that we can trim on the bandsaw after it's laid up. And we're going to go ahead and do that layup right now with room temperature curing resin. <laughs> 